Crimes of child sex abuse have shocked Australia. Cardinal George Pell has begun giving evidence. The YMCA failed to adequately check... Now, one back. devout religious community... ...is in the spotlight. Absolutely no one is above the law. For the first time, what really happened inside an ultra-Orthodox Jewish sect... We are being screwed by the community. ...and shocking new revelations. I don't recall. He just got that close to perjuring himself. That close. Secret recordings and a cover-up to protect the predators. You assaulted me out there. A sordid scandal played out at a royal commission. Did you understand it was against the law for an adult to touch the genitals of another child? I didn't know that as a fact. Shocked. I mean, did he really say that? It's all right. No, New right victims there. speak out. Yeshiva has not ever reached out to me and apologised to me. Whistleblowers pay a hefty price. It felt like we were suddenly reduced to nothing. While one paedophile finally goes public. When I was young, I was also a victim of sexual child abuse. Is it right for me to sit with any perpetrator? This is the story of crimes, conspiracies and cover-ups. For four years, you've done absolutely nothing. You stood by and let the misconceptions fester. That's your opinion. And how victims are making sure it never happens again. It's here. Menahem Leib Wax. My full name is Menahem Leib Wax. I am known as Manny. I'm the second eldest of 17 children. My upbringing was ultra orthodox. In 1988, when I was 11 years old, I was sexually abused by the son of a senior Chabad rabbi inside the synagogue itself. On a further occasion, when I was about 12 years old, until I was about 14 and a half years old, I was sexually abused by a man I knew inside the male mikveh, a ritual bar. I'm sorry, I just, I feel like I need to read it. So. I felt that many people, including adults and teachers at the school and centre, knew what had happened to me and tolerated me being bullied about it. I thought this because no one intervened or helped me. There needs to be some consequences for what the victims suffered for so long by so many, the acknowledgement. Not just that the sexual abuse happened, not just that the cover-ups happened, but the acknowledgement that leaders could have and should have done so much more, but didn't. Manny Wax is a survivor of child sex abuse in Australia. But when he exposed the appalling crimes inside a Jewish sect, his world was turned upside down. Manny's revelations in 2011 ripped through the heart of Chabad, an ultra-Orthodox sect inside Australia's Jewish community. Within three months, David Cyprus, a security guard for Chabad, was arrested and sentenced to eight years for abusing nine boys, including Manny Wax. In 2012, Rabbi David Kramer, a teacher at Yeshiva College, was extradited from America and sentenced to three years for child sex crimes against four boys. And in 2013, Daniel Heyman, a former Chabad director in Sydney, was convicted with a suspended sentence on a legal technicality. All three were working with Chabad in Sydney and Melbourne. Growing up in a Chabad family and community is all I've ever really known, so uh, for me it was just a part of my DNA almost. Manny is one of 17 children. His family were fervent believers of this sect. But when he blew the whistle on the sexual abuse scandal inside Chabad, his parents were blacklisted for supporting their son. To escape the backlash, they left Melbourne for Israel in 2014. 
Absolutely no one is above the law. No more silence. Thank you. For more than three years, Manny was the public face of this scandal. It is just unfathomable. Campaigning on behalf of more than 100 Jewish victims across Australia. People often think about the toll on the victims, but there is an incredible toll that the victims' families also, also have to pay. He also left Australia in 2014, moving to France with his wife and children. Now he's returned to give evidence at the Royal Commission. He hopes it will begin his journey of redemption and help deliver justice to the victims. I've literally been working towards this goal, even subconsciously, for decades. His father, Zafania, has also returned to Melbourne, but the stain of being ostracised remains. His house, directly opposite Chabad's headquarters, is still for sale a year after it went on the market. A changed man, Zafania's not only got rid of the traditional black hat and coat, now he's about to take an even more radical step. I'm an older guy with a long white beard. People think I'm a rabbi. I look the part. It wasn't a decision on the spur of the moment. It was very problematic for me to be in court looking like them. I just don't want that. For two weeks in February 2015, rabbis and senior Chabad officials were hauled before the Royal Commission. An unprecedented crisis in the history of the Jewish community. We know that this sexual abuse has happened. We want to see how the institutions have dealt with it. The Royal Commission will examine whether ultra-Orthodox attitudes may have inhibited victims from speaking out about the abuse. What played out over the next fortnight was the most watched live webcast since the Royal Commission began in 2013. The man Zafania Wax believes orchestrated his blacklisting is the chief rabbi of the Yeshiva Centre, Chabad's headquarters in Melbourne, Zvi Telsner. Could I call witness Zafania Wax, please? On the 16th of July, 2011, Rabbi Telsner, the head rabbi of the Yeshiva Centre, delivered a sermon in Melbourne from the pulpit about the evils of talking to our, those outside of the Yeshiva Centre community about matters which might besmirch the Yeshiva Centre community. Without naming any names, Rabbi Telsner asked the audience, who gave you permission to talk to anyone? Which rabbi gave you permission? He was frothing at the mouth almost at the time. Rabbi Telsner then said, the rabbis have the power to excommunicate people when they disobey the rabbis. Now I am saying clearly, if you think it refers to you, it does. Don't think it means someone else. Well, I thought it meant me. I felt threatened and outraged. I walked out of the synagogue and approximately eight women walked out with my wife in support of her. Could I call, please, Rabbi Telsner? It's extremely rare for an orthodox chief rabbi to be grilled in a secular courtroom. The front row of the bar table were all women. For some of the rabbis, this was a big problem. In particular, as Rabbi Telsner, for him to be cross-examined by a woman, for him to be cross-examined at all and put in the dock at all is absolutely just uh, a woman. Rabbi, you preach so strongly about not speaking without your rabbi's permission. Now, in the intervening period, have you ever once spoken publicly and said to your community, you know when I preach so strongly about speaking out without my permission, I actually wasn't talking about Manny Wax. Did you do that? No. Because you stood by and let whatever misconceptions had arisen, and you let them fester, didn't you? That's your opinion. Yes, and that is a particularly cruel position for you to have adopted, Rabbi, when you know very well Zafania Wax's family suffered ostracisation in the wake of your sermons. For many, the backlash to his public campaign 
was vitriolic. That I'm a media whore, um, that I'm in it for the money, um, that my family and myself have all, are all damaged. We felt our world was flipped upside down. Every aspect of our lives involved the Yeshidimba community. We lived across the road. For Zafania, it was seismic. It felt like we were suddenly reduced to nothing. And had lost all our friends. You please read the last Yes, I can take over. This caused immense emotional pain and trauma for me. What were the perceptions or experiences you had when you came to leave the country? If it was up to my wife. We would have left a long time ago. Until the Royal Commission, Manny had been the sole Jewish victim to speak publicly. Now others are emerging, albeit anonymously. One of them, known to the Commission as AVB, is speaking for the first time on camera. The reason I've asked that I not be identified is I don't want to be defined by those events of the past. And I want to be judged for what I accomplish on a conscious basis. In other words, for something that I've decided to do. I didn't decide to be a victim of sexual abuse or something that was forced upon me. While AVB is also a whistleblower, unlike Manny, he was working behind the scenes. In 2011, he sent an email to the Chabad community urging victims to go to the police. As a community, we must ensure a full and proper investigation is conducted. Ongoing silence is not an option. AVB's plea to the Chabad community also led to a sermon by Rabbi Telsner. As a result, AVB became an outcast. Many believed that publicity should be the basis upon which change could be created, whereas AVB believed that he could change things simply by confronting people. And AVB wants to remain within the community. It's sad that it's come to this, I think. You just give the testimony in accordance with your statement. If anyone cross-examines you about it, you've got the particular paragraphs, you know it, just, just relax. Could I call witness AVB this morning? Like Manny, AVB was also abused by David Cyprus. Cyprus claimed to be a religious man. Cyprus befriended me and then forcibly sexually assaulted me in a classroom at Yeshiva College in Bondi. I remember thinking at the time about the cliff that was nearby and that I wanted to die. It's the most vile and destructive thing you can do to a child. You rip away their innocence. I was nothing. I have experienced bullying, intimidation, and ostracization. I believe this is as a result of me speaking out about matters of child sexual abuse. All we've seen and heard from is Manny Wax. Manny Wax is the victim, Manny Wax's family is the victims as well. Uh, Manny Wax is a spokesperson for all victims. That's always been an issue for me and I couldn't really address it because no other victim was willing to come forward. I think all of a sudden they heard, it's not just Manny Wax, there are really other victims. His testimony confirmed Manny's and confirmed mine. Just change AVB to Manny Wax and it's all the same. And him and his wife were able to testify the damnation that you suffer here, the way it breaks you. Recently, the night before my daughter's bat mitzvah party, my daughter was very distressed and told me that everyone hates us and that she was nervous that no one would come to her bat mitzvah party. At a time when support and love are needed, we are facing hate and vitriol. 
in a way, they're in a much worse position than I am. As much as we've suffered, they've got kids and they want to stay in the community. You realise that your failure to act has caused this man and his family a huge amount of suffering, don't you? I do not believe that my sermon was in any way a major contributor to his shunning. Major. Let's take out the word major. We don't need it. For four years, you've done absolutely nothing, and today you make this pathetic apology. Is that it? Is that the most you're ever going to do? Is that the most you are ever going to do, is the question. I mentioned previously that if anyone thought that the sermon or anything that I said is offensive or is hurting or has caused them any damage, I sincerely regret that it has. Nick, is there anything else you'd like to say? Shabbat shalom. As the backlash worsened, AVB called members of the board of Chabad's headquarters to seek their support. Instead, he got this. Hello. You're a member of the executive of Yeshiva. I read an email about sexual abuse. You wrote back to me, so you don't want to hear those emails again. I don't want anything to do with you. Are you saying that you've never said a negative word about me and my right to ask a question? I think your behaviour is shameful. Just wanted to know what your issue is with me. Did I do something to personally offend you? I'm not interested in speaking to you. You are concerned that I've raised issues about sexual abuse. Don't try and tell me what I said. Day after day in the dramatic two-week hearing, rabbis and senior Chabad officials either pleaded ignorance... I, I'm, I'm not sure... I do not know of any such conversation. ...offered excuses... No victims actually came up to tell me... ...or passed the buck. I did not believe that I have that obligation. Is the Commission allowed to make findings about perhaps suggesting special medical help for the collective amnesia? They all seem to have dementia. I certainly do not recall that. I'm not 100% sure. Zafania was unable to restrain himself. No client has ever text messaged me from the back of the courtroom about how I should be running their case. Until I met Zafania. We tried at the beginning passing notes, but it worked out really So we started doing it via SMS. In one day, Zafania sent me 50 text messages from the back of the courtroom. I was hearing testimony. If it was something that I knew or I thought may throw light for them. It was always informative and very often entertaining. Reminding them of another point. One text message simply said, unfathomable. But I was just SMSing every, probably average every 10 minutes. And another one word text which simply said, vomit. <laughs> Rabbi Glick was the principal at the time of the abuse at Yeshiva College in Melbourne and was in charge when Rabbi Kramer was allowed to flee the country in 1992. In addition, David Cypress remained working as a security guard for almost two decades after sex abuse allegations first surfaced. The fact is that a number of students at the school, under your watch, suffered abuse in various different circumstances. Is there anything you want to say about that? I actually feel sickened by it. Um, I see that many mistakes were made. Have you personally made any effort at all to do anything to help either of my clients? I can't really say whether I have or haven't. I must probably haven't. Have you made any effort to apologise to any of them? Not personally. The Shiva sent out three apologies. I was included in that. Yeshiva College sincerely regrets and unreservedly apologises for not informing the police at the time the allegations arose. 
While officially there were statements of apology, unofficially the shunning of Manny, Zafania and AVB continued. Although Rabbi Glick is no longer the principal, he's still head of the spiritual committee. If Rabbi Glick was serious, he needs to take responsibility for his action. Once he resigns, from his senior positions, I'm happy to meet with him and to talk to him, and I would be more than happy to accept his apology then. As the Royal Commission entered its second week, Yossi Feldman, a senior Chabad rabbi from Sydney, made a stunning admission that sent shockwaves across the Jewish community. You believed a teacher could lie down with a student and massage them, a child. Lie down, in a bed and massage I, I don't, that's for evidence. I don't, I don't see that as necessarily being sexual. Did you understand it was against the law for an adult to touch the genitals of another child? I didn't know that as a fact. Hmm. We might leave it at that point. Staggered. I mean, everyone was just shocked. I mean, did he really say that? Rabbi Yosef Feldman received widespread backlash. The Australian Jewish News reporting our community's shame, writing over the past few days, Rabbi Yossi Feldman's testimony has shocked and saddened the community. That's it, thank you. Apologies must be forthcoming, not only to me and my family, but the whole community deserves it. The tenth and final day of the hearing delivered another explosive moment, this time exposing the hypocrisy of the most senior Orthodox rabbi in Australia. Could I call, please, Rabbi Klufkamp? Do you agree that too many people have engaged or indulged in personal attacks rather than addressing the issue of the adequacy of Yeshiva's response? Too many people. I think one person is already too many people yes. on this issue. So I would agree with you on that basis. Armed with a damning text message, Manny's lawyers lured Rabbi Klufkant into a trap. Rabbi, you, I think, have been following proceedings in this commission quite closely. I've been following the proceedings, yes. Yes. Uh, were you watching or listening when Zephania Wax gave evidence? I actually was in surgery at that time, so I was under general anaesthetic, so that day I wasn't really following the proceedings. Sorry, you had surgery on what date? Oh, sorry, the surgery I had was on Wednesday? Yes. And Zephania so Wax gave evidence on Tuesday. On Tuesday. So in those two days, I was preparing for the surgery and I didn't uh, follow the Royal Commission on those days. Are you sure, Rabbi, that you did not watch or listen to Zephania Wax give evidence? I may have seen parts of it, but I did not, certainly did not watch the entire thing. He thought he was in hospital, he thought he was under anaesthetic, until, and someone in court there, a lawyer, said he just got that close to perjuring himself. That close! Rabbi, did you, um, before lunch on Tuesday, the 3rd of February, send a text message to Zeddy Lawrence at the Australian Jewish News about Zephania Wax's evidence? I don't recall. You don't recall? Did you, Rabbi, send a text message to Mr Lawrence saying, Zephania is killing us. Zephania is attacking Chabad. He is a lunatic on the fringe, guilty of neglect of his own children. Where was he when all this was happening? I may have sent that, yes. Thank you. No further questions. The reaction in court, I think it was an audible gasp. That SMS was a gift from heaven because it encapsulated in three sentences everything that's wrong here today. Not what happened then, but what's wrong today. All I needed was to show this little text message, which encapsulates what he is. Two-faced. Not really. I've said everything to the world. With the two-week hearing over, the Royal Commission must now decide whether to recommend criminal charges. The only thing that would satisfy me in the dock would be, listen, I'm not going to apologise now because I realise how ridiculous that would look and how insincere that would look, so I'm not going to do it. I would have accepted that and I would have thought, right, you get tick one on the scale of one to a hundred, you're at point one instead of being minus a hundred. The Royal Commission ensured that some of these senior officials took responsibility by acknowledging that this happened and apologised for it. It's locked. In some cases I've accepted, but in other cases there needs to be some consequences. And in Rabbi Telsner's case, in Rabbi Glick's case, that consequence needs to be 
removal from their position, full stop. Father and son remain divided on the outcome. Do you have some knowledge of actual change happening now? This finished 24 hours ago, for 48 hours ago. Give them a chance to actually respond. No, because there's no point to continue being, fight, to continue fight with them. No, I'm not friends. fighting. I'm just, I'm being asked, for instance, what I think, and I don't believe any of the apologies, not one. Zafania so is heading back to Israel. Turn around, turn around, please. Turn around, turn around. Okay, bye bye, Menachem. All the best to you, really. I hope everything works out for you. wake of the dramatic testimonies at the Royal Commission, Manny's optimism begins to pay off. Within 48 hours, the family of Yitzhak Gruner, the now deceased leader of Chabad in Melbourne, who was directly implicated in the cover-up, apologises to Manny. And within days of his controversial testimony... Did you understand it was against the law for an adult to touch the genitals of another child? I didn't know that as a fact. Sydney's Rabbi Yossi Feldman falls on his sword. Rabbi Yossi Feldman has resigned as director of Yeshiva Bondi's management board. In Victoria, an MP calls on the state government to act, issuing a stinging ultimatum. I've written to the Premier and to the Prime Minister requesting that the continuation of public funds to the Yeshiva schools in Melbourne be made contingent on the resignation of those responsible and the establishment of a compensatory fund for victims. As the fallout continues, more senior officials resign. Australia's most senior rabbi has resigned from his post. Rabbi Mir Shlomo Klufgant was forced to admit he sent a text message to a newspaper editor criticising Zephania Wax, father of whistleblower Manny. Former principal Rabbi Glick finally relinquishes his positions of power. I have been pained in the knowledge that uh, during my time as a principal this occurred. While three senior Chabad rabbis resign, the chief rabbi of Chabad in Melbourne, Svi Telsner, remains in his post. Unprecedented changes are afoot in Sydney. A public video message is released on YouTube. We will listen to you. We will believe you. We will support you. We will not allow cover-ups. We will not allow vacillation. We apologise for not doing enough. They even recruit state government officials to teach them how to respond to abuse. Today is a reflection of the soul searching going on amongst the rabbinate and that those types of occurrences never happen again. It's not just educating the rabbis. Children as young as five are now learning how to protect themselves. We all have private parts of our bodies and those private parts are private. That means they're just for you. Nobody's allowed to touch your private parts, even through your clothes. Nobody's allowed to show you their private parts, even if it's somebody religious. If someone is saying something to you or doing something to you that makes you feel unsafe, what do you have to do? Yes. Say no, go away, tell an adult. Again, one more time. Say no, go away, tell an adult. But in Melbourne, the doors remain closed to the cameras and board members cling to their posts despite mounting pressure to resign. Inside the gates, AVB is a witness to the stalemate. The reality is, and we're seeing this today with the board, nothing has changed. Life goes on, the show goes on, and politely you can all go to hell. Several months after the Royal Commission, Manny visits his parents at their home near Tel Aviv. Hello. Hi, it's me. Hello. <laughs> but the sex abuse scandal has caused deep divisions between Zafania and his wife, who is still a fervent Chabad member. 
My wife and myself have different views, not in relation to the basis of Judaism, but in relation to ultra-orthodoxy in general and Chabad in particular. Funniest problem, he left Chabad, but he shouldn't leave Chabad. I'm a very much Chabad. I will never leave Chabad. This is my life. I'm still a Lubavitcher because they're bad. It means all Lubavitchers is no good. Preparations are underway for a party. Members of the local Chabad community have been invited. Did she make the food? Yeah, yeah. really? Wow. Some Chabad guests threaten to boycott the party if the cameras are rolling. What? I don't know exactly what the problem is. I don't know if it's just they don't want to be on film or because Chabad's involved and they don't want to show Chabad in a bad light. Let them stay. What, what do you care if they stay? They can stay for sure. They can stay and eat, of course, but no cameras. No, no. Um, no okay, okay, okay. Put it away, put it away. Oh. Cameras off, put it away, put it away. Oh. 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 I'm extremely annoyed about this, that this whole thing was hijacked by them. Did you bang on the door? No. What was that noise? No, to close the door. Oh, I thought you were standing here a whole lot of times on purpose. No, 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 no. <laughs> you closed it, sorry. <laughs> you see how sensitive everybody is? Look at that. <laughs> what a riot. I'm not interested in what they're used to. I would have, well, you know, if you don't want to come, don't come. I don't think it's such a big deal. There's no point to. It was nice. Everyone had a good time. Everyone, the issues still exist. They weren't going to be resolved. They won't be resolved, potentially ever. And you can expect other people to accommodate you as well sometimes. No, yeah, but... Yeah. So you can accommodate other yeah, people but this well. is in my house. and I don't want this discussion now. I now often go at running. Someone's gone as early as three in the morning. This has given me a lot of space to think and try and deal with my emotions, trying to work out where it's all going. Back in Melbourne, the intimidation of AVB and his family worsens. My family and I have had a very difficult time and one of the individuals driving that process is a person of authority. On an occasion, he threatened my child in the synagogue and my child was so upset and so distraught from him, he ran out and didn't come back in for those prayers. So he's made our life very difficult. To protect his family, AVB goes to the police, who advise him to take out an intervention order. I'm fighting this almost by myself. I'm you know, a solo crusader on a moped. Zafania and Manny, you know, they moved on. Um, I haven't taken that leaf. And you know, the part that really bothers me is we had all these leaders saying that we've learned a lot and things have changed. but the post royal commission, and I'm in court fighting for protection. Don't make it so hard for yourself. The rum and raisins is good, the nougat is great. Look, I will I come me me a chicken and chocolate is it today? See ya. You wanna you wanna have a cake? It's frozen yogurt, I don't touch it. But it's in actually, Israel, Manny and Zafania discuss the ongoing fallout from the Royal Commission. After the Royal Commission was over, did you have the adrenaline was finished and you were really exhausted? I was really, for yeah, a few days, I was really, a couple exhausting. of weeks even, really exhausted. I hadn't realised it at the time. Yeah, it was completely exhausting. Mm -hmm. It was at the Royal Commission that Zafania revealed a shocking secret. Manny was not the only wax child who was abused. 
Three of my sons were sexually abused by members of the Yeshiva College and Centre community. Two of Manny's younger brothers were also molested. Neither has ever spoken publicly. One of them, his brother Yankee, now lives in New York, and Manny is going to see him. You gonna see Yankee there? Yes, I've uh, spoken to Yankee, and I understand he might even talk publicly about uh, oh, really? the fact that he was a victim as well. It, it will be interesting to see. I'll, I'll hang out with him for a few days. Um, He's become a bit more positive lately as a result of the Royal Commission. Yes, yes, he has. Like Manny, Yankee also severed ties with Chabad. Let's do it. And left Australia as a teenager. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, actually. Yes, yeah, it's a the hand of the freak. Menachem, I don't know what you're thinking, by the way. He was also abused inside the Chabad headquarters in Melbourne by his teacher, Rabbi David Kramer. He locked the door and he said, lay down. And I'm like, what the hell? And he started, he started like maybe... Were you drunk at all or anything like that? I was freaking nine. Oh, nine? Oh, my God. How can I be drunk? And then I remember Hazel Sobranski knocked on the door. Yeah. And, uh, and he stopped. And he me. jumped up. And that's when I, till then, actually, I realized nothing was wrong. Till he jumped up like that and ran to the door. Jesus. And then Hazel said, why is this door locked? Or something like that. Hey. It's never not meant to be locked. No, of course not. Inspired by Manny, Yankee has agreed to go public with his story. If my speaking helps other victims, helps them realize they didn't do anything wrong, they shouldn't feel like victims and they shouldn't be ashamed of it. And if I can even help one person by me becoming public, then this is worth it. In 1992, Hubbard's headquarters offered to pay for Rabbi Kramer to flee the country. In 2008, he was jailed for raping a child at a synagogue camp in Missouri. My drama started when I found out that Kramer re-offended. Uh, much worse than what he did to me. Yankee concedes that if he had spoken out sooner, it might have prevented that sex crime against another child. To the Missouri victim, I'm sorry. I should have done something then. I have wanted to talk publicly, but honestly, I just didn't have the courage. Instead, I hid behind Manny and let him be the voice. Uh, Company my Heiliger older brother. Okay. The hero of Australia. Yeshiva has not ever reached out to me and apologized to me. I'm not asking you to apologize for Kramer's behavior. You didn't put the gun in his hand, right? So to speak. But you did cover it up. The Yeshiva does have blood on their hands. <laughs> Before Manny was abused, he was a fervent follower of Chabad. As a child, he used to visit its global headquarters in Brooklyn, 770 as it's known. The ultimate pilgrimage for Chabad Jews. Wow. In the aftermath of the Royal Commission, senior Chabad rabbis in New York who had remained silent for four years, issued a statement saying they were appalled at some of the testimonies of their peers in Australia. It's Manny's first visit to 770 in two decades. Inside the headquarters is a shrine to piety and prayer. It hasn't changed a drop, right? It hasn't changed. If Manny walked inside the Chabad headquarters in Melbourne, he'd be considered by some a traitor. Here, he's welcomed by some as a hero. Good to see you, brother. Likewise. Proud of you. Thank you. Very proud of you. Thank you. You made a dent in Yiddishkeit. Thank you. And big time. <laughs> a dent in the dish card. OK. Dent is a good thing or a bad thing? A dent is a great thing. I have so many good memories of this place, to be honest with you. It feels beautiful, actually. Strange, but anyway, complicated. 
<laughs> in a sign of his continuing reconciliation, Manny takes part in a daily ritual practised by Orthodox Jews. The boxes contain the scrolls of the Holy Torah. Inside 770, Manny is lauded. Outside, he's reminded of the militant attitudes of some Chabad hardliners. I had it on before. I did, I did, I did. No, 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 no. Don't, 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 don't push yourself on somebody else. It's all right. No, it's not my thing. It's not my thing. You should be embarrassed to walk without a yarmulke. Where's the Yiddish guy? Why are you crowded? No, 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 no. Visiting New York for Manny is bittersweet because it's also the home of one of his perpetrators. This man has not been convicted but is wanted by Victoria Police for questioning. We cannot reveal his name or identity due to a Royal Commission suppression order. Manny has decided to track him down and confront him, hoping to close the darkest chapter of his life. The abuse first occurred inside the synagogue itself. He sat on the bench beside me and started stroking me on my clothes. He undid my belt and unzipped my trousers and felt around my penis and groin over the top of my underpants with one of his hands. I was taunted. bullied and called gay at school. Because I had been sexually abused by a man. He abused me again in a similar way on a further two occasions or so, each time on the Sabbath at the Chabad house. With David Cyprus, I always knew there were other victims. With this man, I wasn't sure, but now I've been told that there are allegedly more victims. In 2012, America's leading Jewish newspaper investigated Manny's claims and interviewed his alleged abuser. He did not deny the allegations, an incentive for Manny to confront him personally. Admittedly, my heart is beating a little bit faster than uh, it usually does, so I'm a bit nervous. Just wondering, what am I actually going to say? I genuinely don't know how meaningful an apology would be if he offers it. Deep inside, I think it will be of some meaning. Manny is carrying a letter from Victoria Police stating that they would arrest his alleged abuser if he ever re-enters Australia. I'm just fixated on the door. So don't, don't want him to see me beforehand, so I don't want to give anything away yet, but uh, we'll just wait and see until he hopefully comes out. AVB doesn't support Manny's cavalier tactics. I've always thought, in my mind anyway, that pedophiles have a sickness, and the bigger part of the process is about how the institution, how leaderships respond. But to turn up unannounced, um, in my opinion, isn't the right way to go about it. Is he engaging with children? It's got to be the biggest concern now because what's happened in the past has happened, but this really has to be about protecting the children in the future. It's a bit surreal to think that he's probably sitting in there right now, oblivious to all of this, and, uh, and I'm sure he's going to get the shock of his life when it happens. But I hope it happens sooner rather than later because uh, my, it's, you know, the, the, the tension is, uh, I can feel it and uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. While Manny claims he was abused by this man, and although Victoria Police wants to question him, no charges have ever been laid. It's his name. Wow. 
right there on a, a delivery. He's here. I saw you. Come on. You can see his fresh ball sticking out right there as if he has just finished praying. Come on, I'll just have a chat. I saw you. I know, I know you can hear me. Why don't you come out? We can have a conversation. With no showdown, Manny leaves a note asking him to make contact. I have no doubt when he heard my voice today that it was his nightmare and he's going to have nightmares for a while. That was not my intention. If he does have some nightmares, you know what? Many of us have had triggers and flashbacks to what he did. You know, oh God. It's, it's difficult for me to talk about it all the time about that because, you know, I really don't want, I don't feel that it's fair what he gave me, what he caused me to not want to go to a synagogue, to hate being in a synagogue, it really is. And that's why I was very happy in 770 when I went there, that I actually felt comfortable in there, which was very, which was counterintuitive to me in many ways, because, you know, that's the headquarters of Chabad. And knowing that he has allegedly done it to others, and the potential that he is doing it to other people now. What am I to do? Just sit back and allow the status quo to remain? Having come so close to his own abuser, Manny heads to Los Angeles to find AVB's perpetrator. He wants to understand if former pedophiles can be part of the healing process. Known him since I was a little kid in Sydney, the age of seven or so. Used to hang out at his house very often. Very fond memories of him, uh, always liked him, always made us laugh. But there was this dirty little secret that I didn't know anything about. In 1987, when AVB was 14, he was assaulted by Daniel Heyman at a Chabad camp. While we were setting up the bonfire, Heyman forcibly sexually assaulted me. He was very forceful and aggressive. I was very angry and could not understand what was happening and why it was happening. Back in 2011, police asked AVB to get evidence from Daniel Heyman. Hello. Just wondering whether you could run me through what your recollection was. Very little recollection except for the fact I think you were staying over for the night and I think that I attempted to touch you in a place which is inappropriate. I don't recall it going much further than that. It's not something I'm proud of. I can't turn back the clock. You assaulted me out there. Right. And then you told me not to tell anybody. It should never ever have happened and yeah, I don't know what to say. Armed with his admission of guilt, police now had the power to prosecute if he stepped back into the country. 
In 2013, Daniel Heyman did return to Australia for his mother's funeral. And I had heard that he was coming, but I didn't think that was the right time when someone comes to bury a parent for him to be arrested. So I decided I wasn't going to call the police. But Manny couldn't resist and alerted authorities. It wasn't a simple decision, but I really didn't have much of a choice. Daniel Heyman was given a suspended 19-month sentence for his aggravated assault on AVB. He gave me a, what I felt was a very dirty look outside the courtroom when he was convicted. And I, and I felt his pain, I felt his anger, I felt. It was, you know, why did I do it? And I'd like to talk to him about all of these things. Now in Los Angeles, Daniel Heyman has agreed to meet Manny. I think in some ways, greater courage is needed by the perpetrator to share their story because victims will often have the sympathy of the community, whereas the perpetrators will have the complete opposite. The move outrages AVB. I think Manny crossed a line. Really, really upset me because Manny wasn't a victim of Heyman. They're not Manny's crimes to forgive. I think perpetrators have a right to make amends in our community. They should be afforded that opportunity. I was also honest with him. If you were my neighbour, I said to him, no, I would be warning my kids about you in a careful, sensitive manner. So the reality is you're going to be labelled a pedophile for life and that is just the difficult fact that you need to face. It's not an easy thing on his part and his family's part. His wife was there as well. I think he has a very important role to play in all of this. In terms of the research that's required, how many perpetrators are we going to actually have the opportunity to engage with? He can help inform the recommendations and the studies that we want to undertake. Daniel Heyman explains why he has agreed to go public for the first time. Well, we discussed it and we decided it's probably better to appear in it and to do something than do nothing. Because nothing almost makes you look, like, much worse. But Manny remains morally conflicted by the encounter. Is it right for me as a victim advocate to sit with any perpetrator? But I'm doing it, I'm, I feel, for the greater good. It wasn't to give me closure. When I was young, I was also a victim of sexual child abuse. This led to some wrongful actions which I am certainly not proud of. Had I understood the ramifications of my actions, I certainly would never have done what I did. I hope and pray that just like God forgives someone who truly repents and changes his ways, so too the victims can forgive and move on with their lives. It might be difficult for people to comprehend, but I think Heyman was more honest than almost all, if not all, the rabbis of the Royal Commission. He's got a sense of, you know, belief that there's a God out there and he needs to be honest and truthful. And the fact that these other rabbis seemingly haven't been as honest and forthright as, as the perpetrator means that perhaps their level of faith in God and trust in God is maybe a little bit different. In June 2015, the remaining members of the board of Chabad's headquarters in Melbourne, led by Don Wolfe for more than a decade, all finally resigned. It took three more months before the chief rabbi of Chabad's headquarters in Melbourne quit. Tzvi Telsner finally apologising to the victims and their families. A victim's advocate says the Yeshiva Centre community is in shock because many thought Rabbi Telsner would never leave his position. But Manny's father is still angry. I do not believe 
any of the apologies. I don't believe you've seen the light. If tells them is to ring me up and say, listen, I I'd like to come over and we'll sit down and talk, and I really mean it, then I'll point out to you the pigs, pigs flying past the window. David Cyprus remains in prison. He will be eligible for parole in 2019. Rabbi David Kramer was released in 2014 and immediately deported from Australia. Daniel Heyman still lives in Los Angeles. Manny's second abuser continues to elude him and Australian authorities. For AVB, his battle has been won, but the war is not over. As a parent, I'm trying to ensure that I'm providing a safe environment for my children. And also I'm trying to ensure that those errors never happen again. And sometimes the best way to, to fight that is to keep the bastards on us. And the best way to keep the bastards on us is if you're amongst them and you know, you slowly grind them. You know, every day they want to get rid of me, I'm ensured there's nothing they can do. It's uncomfortable for me, it's uncomfortable for them, but they have to face it and so do I. For many, four years after blowing the whistle, the fallout from the Royal Commission has justified his campaign. I've gotten to a stage now where I feel really exhausted of years of fighting against his shiva, against Chabad. I'm tired. It doesn't mean I've given up the fight. Now, it is the community's responsibility to ensure that everything that's come out of the Royal Commission is followed up. They can't leave it to me anymore. It's every person's responsibility, because if we don't get the change that we so urgently require, both in terms of culture and the leadership, then nothing is going to really change.